Hello guys, this is Alex from the Masters of Ultrasound channel and I'm very excited to be back. And I want to show you this phone. With all of you, the Clarius H3L15. I reviewed the older version some months ago, but in that case it was the face array. So this time, let's go with the linear one. By the way, thank you Clarius for letting me try your device and publish my impartial and honest opinion alongside this review. I want to remark that this video is not sponsored and I'm not being paid to do this. But hey Clarius, if you're watching this, I'm open to discuss any sponsoring options or whatever. In this video I will focus on the L15, the Clarius device I've been testing in depth. So first thing when you open the box is the quick start guide. Safety instructions and finally the probe. Beautiful or security and technical info and below here it is the dock which in turn charges the device again more technical info the plug-in adapter given that this is the European version and the charging wire micro USB to USB Regarding the outside design, I have to admit that Clarius made a huge step forward coming from the older version, which was bulkier and heavier. This new version is 30% smaller and lighter, weighing almost 300 grams. Doesn't feel much bigger than some card machine probes. And an important feature in my opinion, the gravity center of the device is more balanced in the center, allowing a much relaxed operation, especially horizontal. The design line is more stylish and modern, with curved lines and soft edges. It is still wireless and the battery is integrated into the device, contrary to its prior version. So this means it's not possible to scan until run out of battery, then swapping it and continue scanning instantly. However, it's not a big deal, since the charging dock will give you almost 100% battery in 1.5 hours. It still has two physical buttons, the notch on one side and here we have the dock connector. Regarding the software, first thing is that the app is free and is on both Apple Store and Google Play Store. It has a demo mode, so you all can try it even though you don't have a Clarius device yet, just to see the settings and how it would look like in real life. As always, bear in mind the stock images they put in, the demo may have super quality and then in real life can be kinda of disappointing. Just take these images with a grain of salt. The ultrasound frequency ranges from 5 to 15 MHz with a max depth of 7 cm. The L15 standard clinical presets are musculoskeletal, lung, nerve, pain, ocular, small organs, thyroid and vascular. It has a HIPAA compliant cloud storage and ICOM, late telemedicine, unlimited users and they have different packages available for the different specialties. I will discuss further when talking about the price. The battery lasts up to one hour more or less but not non-stop and it depends on the weather conditions. For example, if it's so hot out there, the time scanning will be reduced and it can be charged up at about 50% of capacity in half an hour. Boot up time in my case was 30 seconds. And now that we've seen both the inside and the outside, let's see how they combine in the most awaited part of the review. The real life images acquired on a daily basis by a normal user like myself. This is something you guys love, especially when I put them side to side with different probes which will come in another video. So this time I moved to a more rural and exotic environment where they can benefit so much from the portability that this ultrasound probe gives. So let's see it. We will start first with some carotid images. Neck transverse section on the left and M mode of carotid linear section on the right. Note the pulsability. And this is a pulse wave Doppler mode at the carotid bifurcation level. Note the waveform. Same with these two clips from the common carotid artery. Let's move to the thyroid gland. This clip was recorded from the suprasternal notch. Note the probe footprint is quite large and it can be tricky in thin individuals. Regarding the upper limb, I had a cold fracture while skiing, which means I broke my distal radius, where the forearm meets the wrist. You can appreciate how the white band outlining the bone surface is abruptly stopped. Here you have more images of the same side. Note this is after removing the cast, while the bone was still healing and thus it wasn't calcified yet. That's why it is visible. And this is a palmar wrist view at the flexor sheath or carpal tunnel level. Appreciate the difference between tendons, muscles and median nerve. Inside the blue circle.
One of the most useful things to do in the lower limb is to screen for deep vein thrombosis by compressing the veins gently with the probe, as it is shown here. If vein collapses, there is no thrombus inside. Here I just wanted to highlight the good image quality of the V-mode to assess muscle injuries, not the muscle fiber depiction and the quite high frame rate. By the way, these clips were recorded with the auto gain feature which auto adjusts the gain by itself in real time to optimize the image. Same here with the soleus and gastrocnemius muscles at the Achilles tendon level. With the help of color doppler, note how the vein is compressed and the adjacent artery is not. I wanted to show a quadriceps sliding clip so that you can see the frame rate and image quality again. Note the femur on the bottom of the image. Now sliding to the medial part of the leg, long axis of the quadriceps tendon. Now sliding medially, appreciate the image quality. And lots of you guys in the musculoskeletal niche out there, so much comments were asking for musculoskeletal images. I truly hope this helps. Now the gastrocnemius muscles, both short and long axis, tibia bone at the bottom. I saved some pictures and clips in between. Now assessing in real time the popliteal artery and the vein with the color doppler to assess compressibility. Appreciate how they are collapsed or not when pressure is added on the blue circle. The Achilles tendon, first a transverse section and then a linear one. Finally, checking the posterior tubial artery pulse. Whether you need to do cosmetic procedures in aesthetic medicine or assess nodules or tumors in dermatology, there is a skin preset for 1 cm view, although Claris has a better device for these cases, the Linear 20, up to 20 MHz, while this one emits at 15 MHz. Let's go with lung, a very rapidly growing field. Now you're watching a right intercost, a space in the center between two ribs on the right and left side, with eight lines in the lung field, which are pleural line artifacts. This is an M mode, used to assess pneumothorax if a barcode image is seen. Not in this case, this is called the seashore image, which means normal. And here it's shown a left intercostal space, not the long heart interface, like a theater curtain. This is not the optimal probe to scan the liver, but still able to obtain good images. I forgot to include Doppler from hepatic veins. Now I'm gonna run through the exporting process. First we click on the upper left corner of the screen, and these are all the clips recorded from the same exam. We can delay the undesired, and so on. The end exam button at the lower left corner opens the exporting options menu. You can select upload to the cloud, send it to a reviewer, export via DICOM, JPG, and even create the PDF report. Here we can see the progress and voila, very few seconds. I want to show you an advanced feature that from my experience is unique among handheld devices, more widespread among card machines, and it's this split screen where you can freeze an image on one half and continue scanning on the other, to compare with the contralateral, for example, and you can switch between them in real time. Note the auto gain is switched on in this clip as well. You can even split the screen in four, 
Of course, this is more useful when used with bigger screens like an iPad. Then there is also another feature that allows you to zoom in. Another one that moves out buttons and menus and uses full screen in case you need that extra depth. Another unique feature among handheld devices is the Elvistography mode that honestly I don't know how to use it, but hey, I'm sure it will have its target, not me so far. And now let me show you how to measure things. Simply with your fingertip you can press on the two ends of distance or draw a circle around the area of interest. You can also add symbols to help all future viewers know where and how the probe was positioned initially. Like this one, on the carotid bifurcation level. And now let's measure the peak systolic velocity and end diastolic velocity on the carotid artery. First we turn on the pulse wave Doppler, we correct the angle. And we freeze the image and then press the stop established carotid measurement tool and click over the points of interest. Here the end diastolic point was not clicked properly, I apologize for that. And now let me briefly introduce you three recent updates that were released after the video recording and therefore unable to try and show. The first one are some AI tools for auto leveling, auto measurement and color highlighting for musculoskeletal only in the US so far. The second is the ability to control the device with your voice, without needing a non-sterile hand or an assistant. And finally, the third one is the implementation of a marketplace of third-party tools to improve your particular workflow, like Deep Echo, Focus Pro, ThinkSono, and so on. And now, before wrapping up, let's talk about pricing. So you can buy the scanner only for $4,900, which comes with a 3-year standard warranty and that's it. Or you can buy the scanner plus a membership, which costs $3,395 plus an annual membership of $595. So the membership includes monthly online training, unlimited cloud storage, DICOM, pulse wave Doppler and the following advanced software packages, such as musculoskeletal, aesthetics, breast and vascular which each one would cost $1,200 if bought separately without a membership. Additionally, they have a 30-day return policy for online buyers, just in case you're interested. And now, let's wrap up with the main pros and cons. Pro number one, the image quality. It has one of the best image qualities and high definition that I have tried. Number two, the great amount of imaging modes, settings, and packages. Number three, that it is wireless and very portable, but lighter than the previous version. Number four, unlimited users and cloud storage. Number six, iOS and Android compatibility. And number seven, the three year standard warranty. And now let's go with the cons. Very few cons. If I had to say some, I would probably go with the price and all the add-ons that you can add plus the annual subscription. But it is a relative con because if you can afford this device, it's truly worth the price. And if I had to say another con, I would probably go with the fact that being a dedicated pro with only this linear end, can be kind of disappointing for some generalists such as internal medicine or family medicine that they would probably need the convex one. All in all, a very nice device that will have its specific target clients such as physiotherapists, orthopedic surgeons, rheumatologists and whoever wants to scan shallow structures. And as usual, I will leave the, their link down below in the description box just in case you want to check their official webpage. And if you're thinking about acquiring this device, I would recommend you to take a free demo at first. So this way you'll see if this fits your needs. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember this wasn't sponsored and I gave my honest opinion. Drop below in the comments other scanners that you'd like me to review. And see you on the next one. Bye!